Hi YouTube, in this video I'll be explaining how to read, understand, and troubleshoot using the receptacle outlet tester, also known as an outlet tester. I have some here to show you. This is a Klein outlet tester made by Klein. This is a Craftsman outlet tester made by Craftsman. Notice the little red button in the middle of the Craftsman outlet tester. Some of the receptacle outlet testers come with this red button. This red button is used to test GFCIs to make sure that they work correctly. You can also plug into a regular outlet that's wired on the low side of a GFCI, and you can match that red button, and it should also trip the GFCI. I'll give a demonstration of how to use that red test button later in the video. But first, let me get to how to use a receptacle outlet tester. Let me give you a little information on the receptacle outlet tester. A receptacle outlet tester are used to test 120 volt outlets like these. They could be 15 amp or 20 amp outlets. But they're, they're, this, these are used to test 120 volt outlets. Each receptacle outlet tester has three test lights. Two amber test lights and they have one red test light. Now. If an outlet is working properly, the two amber lights should be on. If anything other than that, maybe you may have the red light and an amber light on, or just one of the amber lights on, anything other than both amber lights on, there's something wrong with the outlet. So what I have here is I have six outlets. I number them one through six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I pre-wired these outlets, and I wired five of them wrong on purpose so that we can discuss uh, what's wrong with each outlet. So I'll plug into number one outlet so we can discuss and see what's wrong with it, okay? So when we plug in the outlet number one, the middle amber light is on. This indicates an open ground, which means somewhere in your circuit, from your panel to this outlet, you're losing your ground. Now, the outlet will still work without a ground. The outlet only needs a neutral and a hot to work. So the outlet will still work, but you are losing your ground. Uh, I want to touch on this. If your house was built back in the 1950s, if your house was built back in the 1950s, it's a good chance that your house was wired using this type of non-metallic sheeting cable. Notice that you have a white wire for the neutral and a black wire for the hot, but you don't have a bare copper wire or a green wire for the ground. If your house were wired using this type of non-metallic sheeting cable uh, and you plug the outlet in, you will get this because you don't have a ground running through your outlet. Now again, the outlet will still work without the ground. Now, today's houses, and this probably started back in the 19, late 60s. Today's houses and houses were in the mid, late 1960s, they use this type of non machine cable. This is called Romex. Notice that it has a white wire for the neutral, a black wire for the hot, and has a bell wire, bell copper wire, for the ground. So this outlet was used and for with this uh, number telling sheet cable, both amber lights would be on. Now, another problem it could be that's causing this open ground is you may very well have a ground in the outlet, but the ground wire may not be torqued down on the green screw. Notice how that's not torqued down. If you torque the green screw down on the ground wire, then both amber lights may come on. Okay, and again, what we have here is called an open ground. Uh, now the outlet can work with the open ground. However, it's very important that the outlet is grounded because the ground prevents a person from being shot or electrocuted. And again, this is called an open ground. So let's plug in the outlet number two. When we plug in the outlet number two, we see that the far right amber light is on, only the far right amber light. This indicates 
and open neutral. Now this outlet won't work because the outlet needs a high and a neutral to work. And you're missing your neutral. So in this outlet, Somewhere in your circuit, coming from the panel to this outlet, you're losing your neutral. It could be in this outlet, or it could be in some outlets before this outlet. Or it could be very well that in this outlet, this white wire that's landed on that silver screw need to just simply be torqued down. Maybe the white wire just simply is not torqued down on under the silver screw. Now, if you choose to investigate and try to find out what's wrong, if you choose to try to fix the problem, please, please turn off the circuit. Do not try to fix any problems with the circuit on. Again, what we have here is called an open neutral. Okay, now let's plug in the outlet number three. And when we plug in the outlet number three, we get no lights on. When you plug into an outlet and you get no lights on, that's called an open hot. So what that means is someone from somewhere in your circuit, from your panel to this outlet, you're losing your hot. Now it could be very well that the circuit breaker is turned off or that the fuse is pulling, the fuse is blown. Or it could be that the hot wire that's normally black in houses, the hot wire that's under the goes through is not torqued down and that could be causing the open hot once you torque the screw this the goes through down on the hot black wire then you may get a uh two amber lights on and again if you choose to try to fix any of this stuff make sure that you turn off the circuit okay so again what we have here it's called an open hot. All right, let's plug in outlet number four. When we plug in outlet number four, we have the red light on and the far right amber light on. What that indicate is a hot ground reverse. It's a hot ground reverse. Now, it could be two things with this. One, it could just simply be a bad outlet. Number two, it could be that you have your hot landed where your ground should be landed or your height is touching some kind of metal that's grounded and your ground is landed where your height is landed or touching some metal that's hot. Now, this could be dangerous because if the height is landed where the ground should be landed or is touching some something that's hot, it could very well cause an appliance, say like a toaster, you plug in the toaster and the frame of the toaster, metal frame should be grounded. Now, the problem is that the hot is going to the metal frame of the toaster, which exposes people to electric shock or electrocution. So this is very dangerous. Again, this is called a hot ground reverse. If you ever had this problem, it's best to turn this circuit off and call an electrician. Okay, again, this is called a hot ground reverse. All right, let's plug in the outlet number five. Notice when we plug in the outlet number five, we have the red light on and we have the middle amber light on. This is called a hot neutral reverse. What we have here is where in one of your outlets where the hot should be landed, which is on the go through, the neutral is landed. And where your neutral should be landed, which is the silver screw, your hot is landed. And that is what's causing this. Now, your outlet will still work. I can plug any appliance in the outlet number five, this outlet, and it'll still work. But this is incorrect and should be fixed. And again, the problem is, is that you have your hot landed on the silver screw. And you have your neutral landing on that gold screw, which is incorrect. And again, this is called a hot neutral reverse. So let's plug in the number six. When we plug in the number six, we see that both amber lights are on, which means that number six outlet is working correctly. Now, 
If you forget everything that I talked about in this video, that's fine. Because if you purchase a receptive outlet tester, the troubleshooting instructions is on the tester itself. Notice the test uh, examples, the troubleshooting uh, examples on the outlet decline outlet tester. It's also on the Craftsman outlet tester, the troubleshooting uh, test information is on the front of the tester itself. So if you buy a tester, the information will be on the tester. Now, I would like to show you how to use the red button that was on the Craftsman tester. Okay, so what I do is I'll plug into the GFCI. Notice that the GFCI is working correctly because both amber lights are on. I can match that red button and it trips the outlet. It can also be used to test regular outlets that should be on the low side of a GFCI like this. So picture this. This GFCI is in one bathroom. And on the low side of this GFCI is this GFCI. It may be in a totally different bathroom. So that's where this outlet and that red button comes in handy. So I plug into the uh, regular outlet that's wired on the low side of the GFCI. And I can match the button and it trips the GFCI. So that's what you would use that red button for. Now I need to show you one more thing here. Okay. Excuse me. This is a different GFCI that I just had. Now I want to test this GFCI. Notice that it does work properly. Now I'll mash the button to see if it tripped the GFCI. And I'm mashing the button and notice it does not trip the GFCI. There's a problem here. So it could be two things. It could be, number one, a bad GFCI, or it could be, number two, the line side wires that's coming from the panel. Those wires are the line side wires. They should be landing on the line side of the GFCI. They're landing on the low side of the GFCI. Now let's test the outlet that should be on the low side of the GFCI. And I match the button, and it does not trip the GFCI. And again... It could be that the line side wires that should be on the line side that's coming from the panel are landing on the low side of the GFCI. This needs to be fixed. This could be dangerous because GFCIs are designed to trip anytime a person is exposed to water. Like, for example, if I'm washing dishes and there's a toaster sitting next to the sink and it falls into the water, while I'm washing dishes, I could be very well electrocuted if this GFCI is not installed properly or is not working properly. So that's all I have for this video. Uh, I hope that you can benefit from this video, and I thank you very much for watching.